Delighted to welcome onto the show for the very first time. She's a big fight coming up. Bellator 174 um, for the women's um, inaugural 145 pound title. It is Marlis Cone and she faces Julia Budd um, on that card. Marlis, first of all, great to have you on the show. How are things with you? I'm good. Thank you. I'm here in Amsterdam. It's already uh, evening and it was a long training day, but I'm ready to go and uh, I'm looking forward to fight next Friday in the cage. Excellent stuff. Yeah, obviously you're, you know, one of the veterans, one of the pioneers of the sport. Um, how much does this fight mean to you in relation to your career so far? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great honor that uh, I can fight for the title. Um, in 2000, I won my first title in Japan. And then a decade later, I won another title uh, in Strikeforce in America. And uh, that was in 2010. I lost it in 2011. And since then, the sport has... Uh, grew so hard and it really started to become mainstream even in my home country in the Netherlands people start to realize that MMA does more than kickboxing and they start to like it and try to show up in uh, in late night shows and in papers and uh, so it's, it's really important to uh, this is great momentum uh, and it's really important now to win this title Do you think that has something to do maybe you, you mentioned the mainstream um, have picked up on the sport with Alistair Overeem's success. Obviously, you're one of the pioneers as well. Um, how do you think Jermaine Durandami's success last week has played into that as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, normally, when uh, like a soccer, a soccer team or, I don't know, a tennis player or whatever, like, you know, the Olympic sports, when they do something and they arrive at the national airport here in, uh, in Amsterdam, then uh, there's always... Uh, the national news is there, and when fighters win big titles, if it wasn't the K1, Peter Arts and Raymond Bianchi and Sammy Shields yeah. and so on, uh, when Ramon Dacus was winning, there was never any interest of the media. And after Jermaine won her belt, she's the first martial artist that has been uh, uh, welcomed by the national news at our airport. So things are really, really changing in the Netherlands and like the way it's changing in uh, in America already for quite a while. And uh, mm. I think that's a global thing and they, and they will only become bigger and more mainstream. So, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Obviously, your last fight, you, you had a loss, uh, unexpected loss. You were a heavy favorite going into that fight. Um, you know, how, how has that affected you mentally going into this fight? Obviously, coming off a loss and then fighting for a world title. Do you have to prepare yourself differently mentally? No, to be honest, not. I know what happened in that last fight. She got under my skin with making, yeah. uh, not making weight for the Trash first time talk. in a row, with having a big mouth and so on. So uh, you have two uh, two big rules when you're a fighter: don't become emotional. Well, I was in the cage, and normally I, I'm not like that. But the only thing was I wanna wanna hurt her, wanna wanna bring her pain. <laughs> and the second thing is I underestimated her. I was too arrogant. So there are two rules you, you should never break as a fighter. I did, and I had to pay for it. So I, I it really felt as a loss for the first time in my career. Mm. And uh, I grew a lot from that. I really learned a lot from that loss. Um, in a weird way, it was, some, it was a weird gift. Mm. Well, and um, I didn't lose any confidence in myself. I know I'm the better fighter. Were you surprised at yourself that you, you reacted like that? In the last fight, because obviously you're a you're a veteran of the sport. Yeah, especially for that reason, of course. And, and I wasn't fighting her. I mean, she was like 15 pounds heavier when we were on fight day, and I felt that. But that was not the reason why I lost. The reason why I lost was because uh, I was mad. Mm. She took me to the ground, and I ended up in a guard. So I was mad at myself while I was in that guard. And then I heard from my corner, uh, it's 10 seconds to go. And later on, I found out it said 30 seconds to go. Mm. Uh, but I, I didn't hear that right. And then I was so mad at myself that I, I said to myself, Marlouz, how can you let this go out of the first round? And when I saw that, all of a sudden I was in the arm bar. So I wasn't that much busy with her. I was fighting myself and um, I made a lot of mistakes. And um, after that fight, I asked Bella to, to I could, if I could fight her again. Uh, she refused yeah. because she only wants to fight me for the title. And um, then I was presented to Lina Nogueira. And, uh, well, she didn't make weight, so I didn't fight again. Yeah. I, I want to ask you, obviously, you know, you're the former strike force. Um, 135 pound champion um, you're, you've a number of fights obviously at 45 pounds as well can you talk to me through how you feel 
personally, you know, fighting at the different weight classes at 135 pound, at 145 pound, what's optimum weight class for you and how does your body feel um, in relation to cutting weight between those weight classes? 135 is hell. <laughs> I hated it every minute of it. Uh, <laughs> the reason why I did that was because um, I, I fought Cyborg with the 145 title, and I lost the title, obviously, the title fight. And then I was presented with another title shot straight away uh, at 135. So, yeah. What do you do? You say yes, and you have to imagine at the time there, w- there weren't a- any other organizations that were big and that were promoting uh, female fights. So it was basically the only option I had. So I took it, but I was also uh, overtrained in that period. I've been overtrained for many years, and I didn't mm. realize it. And if you're overtrained and you have to make a big weight, big weight cut, that's it's like that's really hell. You're not busy with training. You're only busy with eating and feeling yeah. lousy. And uh, I'm really glad that I'm can fight at 145 again. Is that something you'd like to avenge in the future? Uh, obviously, those two losses um, to Chris Cyborg in the past. Is that something maybe down the line you, you think about trying to do again? Yeah. Well, at this point, uh, I don't look into the future. Yeah. I only look at uh, March 3rd. I want to win the title. It means the world to me. And uh, it's a very uh, big momentum, and uh, I really have to get a title. I'm, I'm not focusing on anything else. Julia Bird is a really tough opponent, and I know next Friday I will be in the cage and I will be in a war. So my focus needs to be there. I cannot think about Chris or about what happens after mm. this. I need to get that belt. Point. Yeah. Do you think this fight, obviously Julia Bud, we we know Julia's a really good record, and um, she's uh, you know she, she's uh, I think nine and two. She's um, coming off a you know a big win streak as well. Do you think your versatility could be the difference in this fight? And um, you know you're you're a lady with a lot more submissions and you know a lot more knockouts. She's I think two submissions, but she tends to like to take people to the ground. Do you think that's an area maybe she doesn't want to go near against you? Is go to the ground? Uh, I think I'm a more well-rounded yeah. fighter than Julia is. If she wants to do the stand-up, I'm fine with that. If she wants to take me to the ground, she's really good against the cage, but I think I have a good solution for that. Um, the ground, I think I'm better. I don't care what, where this fight ends up. The only thing I don't want is to win on points. I want to win on a submission or on a KO. If it goes to the scorecard, it feels like, uh, like I've underperformed. So, I want to win, and I want to win before the rounds are over, and that's that's the only thing I have on my mind. And if it's Julia or anyone else, I don't care. I've I've, I've prepared for a long time. I've had, had a great training camp. I'm feeling so ready, and I'm, I'm, I'm I really want to go out there, fight, have that war, and have that belt around my waist. Is it the challenges now that really motivate you in your career? Obviously, the the inaugural title. Are they the type of fights that you need? Um, to keep you motivated, you know, big fights with a lot of meaning behind them. Yeah, it, it, you know, fighting, it doesn't matter uh, where it's at. Even, well, okay, dojos may be a little different, but wherever you are, if it's on a, on a tatame and it's a grappling fight or it's an MMA fight and it's on a small in a small venue and you're at the undercard, it's about fighting. It's about facing an opponent and an opponent that has been trained well and an opponent that wants to knock you out, wants to submit you, that will leave it all in the cage. That's, that's to me, that is fighting. And, of course, the, the, the stage is bigger and there's a little bit more pressure, but I'm used to that. You know, it's the challenge of fighting that's, that's, that's what, what's, to me, the beauty of fighting also. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to test myself also next uh, next week. I want to I want to see if the things I've been training, if they work yeah. in the cage, and if I feel her strength uh, onto me, that, what, what, how will I react? And you know, it's, uh, um, I think that's the beauty of fighting, and that's why I'm fighting for such a long time. Definitely, I think there's twelve um, featherweights, ladies featherweights in the women's Bellator division. Um, do you think Bellator is the place to be now for 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 a featherweight? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, the UC has started uh, yeah. a featherweight division with two fighters, and <laughs> it was an immediately title. I mean, to me, I'm not going to say anything about it, but 
it says something. Yeah, Bellator has the best. I'm also, there's also this, um, Invicta. I'm really bad at names, so I apologize for that. But the, the, the interim Invicta yeah, yeah. featherweight fight uh, champion. Megan Anderson. I like that girl a lot. I think yeah, she's excellent. Yeah, yeah, she's from Australia, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think she will grow into a huge champion one day. Is that something you look at? Do you look at the younger fighters and see, oh, she she might be coming after me one of these days and, and keep a close eye on them? Yeah, because it, it, uh, everyone is in my division I'm interested in. But yeah. it's also nice to see a new generation picking up the things. And uh, I mean, if that's what you always see, the young and the old. And I love it if, if those fights come together, you know, if uh, it's, it's, what will win? Will youth win our experience? Stuff like yeah. that. I love it. And I love that there's um, the depth is coming into the 145 as well. Yeah. You have a great relationship um, with a fighter uh, from this island named Catherine Costigan. She's going to be fighting um, uh, a night after you're going to be fighting. Um, how's your relationship with Catherine Costigan these days? Will you, will you be having a close eye on her fight as well? Yeah, yeah I love her. She, yeah, she came to my gym. We trained together. She's a tough cookie, yeah. Yeah. She's, uh, I really hope she succeeds. But she, I didn't know she was fighting. Uh, yeah, she's a... F- uh, I thought she would be maybe fighting. fighting. Yeah, she's a fight. Uh, when the, is she the, fighting? The same night as you, 4th, 4th of March in Dublin. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, wow. Oh, I hope she wins. Yeah, definitely. Okay, one last one for you, uh, Marlies. I, I appreciate the time. Um, How is this fight going to play out um, next week? I, I have no idea, to be honest. I'm ready for everything. Uh, the only thing I know is that I will end up with my hands raised and the belt around my waist. Very much looking forward to it. I really do appreciate the time. And best of luck next week at Bellator 174. Do appreciate the time again. Thank you for having me. 